anything and don't come back to see it this time, please feel free. Brother Charles, we really appreciate him, Sister Mel. Um, when I think about Brother Charles, I think about how encouraging he always was. No matter what happened, he was encouraged. I think about that scripture that said he won't put the more on the he will be a model. And how whatever happened, Brother Charles was encouraged. And he would encourage others. And I think about the cars, I think about so abundant hospitality. Anytime someone needs a place to stay, this car's home is open. When they want to woodwork, I remember them keeping people. Their house is a lot smaller there, but it didn't matter. They still have a heart to help others. And this is what I think about what I did. Last thing I did want to say was our, well, I know that our granddaughter went through a really serious situation. I told our home saints that, but we were forced to different things my, my children were. But Brother Charles was right here. That meant so much to us to see him show up at that courthouse every time they were forced to go. He was there. So I appreciate Brother Charles. I will miss him. And I appreciate what a faithful friend he has been to our family, to my children, to my husband in particular. A lot of times I'll say, well, you know, you'll say something about people not changing. Now I can say that until he passed, he was a faithful friend of my husband and having a lot to me. So I love the family. Thank you, Mrs. Amen. say a few words on behalf of our dear brother Charles. I know that it's a big void that's going to have to be filled. I have a question. Do you have any one in there that is prior military? Anyone is prior military? I've got something here. And anyone that's prior military knows what that is. It's called a DD-214. This is my DD-214. Now I'm going somewhere with this, so hang with me. I had to write some things down. Our dear brother Charles was a husband, a father, a grandfather, a brother, a mentor, friend, choir member, baritone singer, a barbecue, trees out front, trees along East Street, they're on the church. Those were planted by our, our dear brother Charles. Handyman, board member, history buff, problem solver, a sportsman. He was a thinker, integrity. He had character. He was honest, willing to help, caring, wise. He was very approachable. He was kind. He was gentle, but he was yet direct. He was compassionate, a fighter for the right, a prayer warrior, an educator, and had a deep concern for our young people and their education and their success. This DD-214, when I got out of the military in 1985, there are certain things in here that were required. This is the last piece of paperwork you get before your separation from the military. I didn't do too much, but the decorations, medals, badges, citations, awards, I was a marksman, Army Service Ribbon, Army Achievement Medal, Good Conduct Medal. But the main thing with my DD-214 
is that my discharge was honorable. My Lord. I think of that when I think of Brother Charles. He has received his DD 214. My Lord. And his discharge has been honorable. What we see here, he has gone on to his reward. Now, one thing about my DD 214, there comes benefits with it. Yes. I only did three years in the military, but I was able to retire three years early from my job because of my DD 214. I can go to the store and get a discount because of my DD 214. <laughs> so there's benefits that come along with the DD 214. Yes. But Brother Charles, yes. he is reaping the benefits of his DD 214. My Lord. A husband, a good husband, yes. who loved his wife, a good father, a brother, he was a mentor. He helped. He, he was there to help. He was direct, but yet passionate. Brother Charles received an honorable discharge yes. from this world down here. And he has gone on to reap the benefits for the way he lived his life here. I appreciate Brother Charles. You know, I have a, a trailer that I hooked in the back of my truck, and it's a what I call a haul all trailer. Brother Charles will call me up. Brother Tony, are you using your trailer tomorrow? He was always going to pick up a load of mulch to come down here and mulch around the flower bed. He had borrowed my trailer. Well, one time I told him this, and this was just recently, within the last couple months, uh, the wiring harness where you plug into the truck, it, somehow I got these wires uh, disconnected somehow when I put them back together it just it blew, it blew a fuse in my truck with Brother Charles he came and got my trailer took it down to U-Haul got it wired up for me put new tail lights on it for me I mean that's, that was just Brother Charles that was just Brother Charles I mean, you know just if he, if he could help he was there to help and I know that anyone here that knows Brother Charles is not you know it's not like now, I wonder if he's still in the church. No, mm -hmm. you know. Brother Charles was a good man. He was a good man of God. And God used him while he was here. Even in my teenage years, I remember when Brother Charles and Sister Mel first got married. When they gave him a word. And we had what they called a Saturday Boys Club. And it was just a bunch of little boys from the church. We'd go with Brother Charles, Sister Mel, Sister Mrs. Jew, just a little baby. But he had a devotion with us, and then we would go down in their basement. They had there were some antique chairs, and we were stripping these chairs and varnishing them. And Sister Mel was upstairs cooking. Now that's the main thing, <laughs> <laughs> making pies. And <laughs> but like I said, Missy was just a little baby. But he instilled something in us, a work ethic that has lasted throughout my lifetime. He taught, he taught us something back then that I am yet using today. I love Brother Charles. And I know that God has given him an honorable discharge from this life to the next. I'm thankful. Amen. Amen. For you, Sister Mel, all the parties, love you very much. Having gone down this path not too long ago myself, we you know what you're going through. You are in our prayers and consideration. Anything, I'm not just saying that. Everything. Happened to be there when Charles passed. I was on my duty here, so I wanted to come in and help Sister Mel on Thursday morning. We were really praying over this, uh, you know, we were supposed to cook, cook his breakfast. And, uh, has he gone like, uh, no, I was, I was very nervous. <laughs> but, he, you know, tried to stay within the confines of what they stipulated in the diet and everything. And, uh, so 
that miserable portrait <laughs> tolerable, you know, and just kind of bore with it. And yeah, the sun came out, you know, during the day. And, you know, I, I think it was a good trip overall. But anyway, we just had to endure some things. But uh, we are, appreciate the Clarks. Their door always open. It's always welcoming. And we appreciate you, and again, we're here for you. Good evening. My name is Adrian Kevin, and that was my lovely mother, in case you didn't know. <laughs> I wanted to rehearse a few things in the brief. Um, on the 2nd of November, I moved from Columbus, Ohio to Columbus, Georgia, and the Saints were so kind and had a little going away of it. And Brother Charles shared some remarks there. We have them captured, bless a uh, precious memory. And while there, I <coughs> shared how Brother uh, already said the Clark home has consistently been open to us, especially the young people, many, many, many times. Those who know know that the, the Clark home has been open for us. Also, Brother Charles, outstanding bass singing and old cassettes. If you hear recordings from the eighties. Even going back to the 70s, I believe, and of course, down throughout the 90s and 2000, you hear Brother Charles anchoring that bass. And for those who don't know, Brother Mike, I'm about to give away a secret here, but there's a microphone right up there in that light, and it captures the sound from the choir, you know, to amplify those in the back a little more. So I believe that mic, and maybe back then they had a stand also from time to time, will capture that bass singing. This is rich to hear those old recordings of that outstanding bass voice. Also, Brother Charles took time with me. I appreciate that. Also, there was a key phrase that he was sharing about Christ being on the cross. Asked him, will you join me? The day I was sanctified, that was something that I had a vision of. But I wanted to share some new memories also with the family. I have an outstanding memory of Brother Charles. It goes way back to when I was a little boy. I had an outing. I can't picture it, probably. Maybe it was just a Saturday outing. Well, back then, the brothers and the young boys would like to see they still had it. The young boys proving that they do have it. The older brothers try to prove that they still have it. <laughs> and they got out there, and Brother Charles was out there. Little Richard Frazier was out there, and they were playing football. And this might not be politically correct, but they weren't playing with pads and, you know, flag, touch football. No, they were out there hitting, just like live football. So Richard Frazier, pretty young back then. I was a little boy, so Richard was probably in his teens, maybe, I'd say. He caught a pass. He took off. It's like he was running toward the sideline. Like, you know, he can move a little bit. Those phrases are athletic now. So he was moving. All of a sudden, I see like, I don't know, maybe like an eagle. This dark form swoop in. And he hit Richard Frazier, and Richard Frazier went airborne. <laughs> like this, flat. Not only that, but there's a tree nearby. And Richard Frazier grabbed hold of the tree like this and swung around the tree. I will never, ever forget that day. Some of us had to watch the uh, Super Bowl Sunday and all that stuff, but we had the Saturday out in the alley, man. Amazing. Good thing was, he was okay, Rich was still okay, but I'll always remember the Charles from Hit. The Charles from Lane Woods, so I have that as an outstanding memory. Love him. Also, Brother Charles was a landscaper, and many times he gave me tips about landscaping. We would talk about it. He'd have his begonias going nicely and in patience, and have uh, different things growing up the wall there, and you know, the nice pond in the backyard and all of that. So that was a, a tribute to his beautiful creative side. And also, I wanted to lastly say, um, in regard to him, that he was a fixture in this congregation. I look back at old pictures of my father's wedding. Who's there standing there as one of the groomsmen? Brother Charles Carter. And he will certainly be missed. You spend over 40 years in the congregation. 
That's a lot of years making an impact on a lot of people. And we can see, I believe, we can see um, effects of that this evening. So family, love you all, praying for you. God bless you. We have been close and will continue to be close. In fact, I'm looking forward to drawing even closer. God bless you.
a rich baritone, a rich baritone that boom and made you feel the words that flow as they filled the room. He laid his weapon down, won't study war no more. He met up with the other soldiers that have gone on before. I want to give time for the ministers that are here that would like to say a few words. She was a 
got to uh, eight, five years older than I am. And Lorraine and I, we were very close, but every time I conducted a funeral, she accompanied me. And so one day we were at the burial ground, and I said, you know, Lorraine, I did notice something. When her funeral was, everybody accompanied it there to the burial ground. But nobody stayed. I said, I want you to do a promise, okay? He says, when I die, if I die before you, please don't leave me alone. He said, I love you, son. No, I'm, not. I'm sorry. You can't do it. <laughs> no one knows when that's true death. But if we've been faithful through life, then Jesus meets us at the door. That's right. I'm pushing this in. God bless you, sister man. God bless you, God family. Our prayers go with you and give us away. Christ, but 
set me on the path. And as God's word says, who begun a good work is fully and able to complete Charles is complete. He's complete in Christ. So as my dad told us before he moved on as well, love one another. Charles loved everyone. Yes. Brothers and sisters, those who are not believers, love one another. Brother Charles, thank you for your example. Thank you for your, for your loyalty. Thank you for your moral character. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your hospitality. Thank you for your unmovable faith. Thank you for your never-ending support for the ministry. Thank you for standing. Thank you for trusting God. Thank you for not doubting. Thank you for not compromising for your impact in my life. Thank you for your legacy. Thank you for the challenge you represent. Thank you, Brother Charles. Thank you for your song, No One Like Jesus. Certainly there was no one like Jesus in this world for you, for representing that every Bible principle can be obeyed. Thank you for proving the holy living is real, is possible, and is true. Thank you for standing on every Bible principle. Thank you. Rejoice in heaven, my brother. You deserve it. You are the proof that this world needs to show that a blameless and spotless experience can be obtained, can be lived, and a crown can be obtained. Thank you. Next on the program, we have a song by Brother Charles' son, Christopher.
This top from mine, we have not been used to stop global wars or build a billion dollar dollar corporation, but it was used to rear six children, maintain a faithful marriage, and inspire young people all over his own town. My father had a pop of mine. My father can be usually found in three places. During the day, one place you can find him is on the computer, studying the latest development on Barack Obama, <laughs> or watching a documentary on the Tuskegee Airmen, the Buffalo Soldiers, or anything related to World War II. Every day is another day for him to learn, discover, and increase his knowledge. As he learns, he passes all that knowledge to others. Whether you like it or not. <laughs> Another place he can be found is in his room meditating, or reading his Bible, or about close for his heights, or other spiritual texts. In these moments, he just sits there. Legs crossed, face relaxed, head back. Eyes closed. <laughs> when you walk into the room, his eyes will open. But his body remains motionless, reminding you that neither his mind nor body was asleep. He was just standing. Here are a few pensive men like my father. The last place my father can be found is in the backyard, nurturing the many plants and lively creatures that have found their way to 3,000 native menu dryings. Whether he is adding to the two pots he built himself with limited help, yeah. <laughs> painting the deck, or trimming the plants, in each and every moment, his mind processes and provides him with new ideas and friends. Whether or not you appreciate his powerful mind is reflected. As for me, I am proud to be of a man who attended RPM in the 1970s, when black students were only less than 1% of their entire student body, who did continue his education, receiving his master's degree at, at uh, Northwestern University, and then after the corporate world that opened, kept learning, kept striving, and received his associate's degree at Clark State Community College. In early childhood education, he cares about his community. He cares about her. My noble feelings. It's okay to be perfect. But I have no regrets about my father and our relationship. Even after all the arguments, it is both my hope and fear that I would really be just like <laughs>
folks not here tonight, the need to hear what I have to say. Wow. I tend to think that I'm special. Right now I'm special. <laughs> than all y'all, and then I'll be <laughs> I'm extra special because when Mel and Charles got married, I thought I was their child. <laughs> so no lie. See, my parents didn't teach us the word and the bees. So I had no idea where children came from. <laughs> so I literally thought that Charles was my dad. What's that? I saw him as a father, and he treated me as a daughter. I mean, I was seven, right, or less, I don't even know. Um, so, Missy, where are you? you know, I, I'm the firstborn. <laughs> but Charles, yeah, I know I'm a baby girl, so I, had, I have to feel like the firstborn. I hear my brother laughing at me. Um, but my brother-in-law, man, you guys have no idea the impact that he has had on the United States. You say that. Because I have had an impact on the United States, it was because of him. He started my nursing journey. And I have cared for the poor for so long. And one of the nurses came up to me, I, I teach at Pacific University, and she said, it started with your brother-in-law. And look at the impact. Had. He needs to know, his family needs to know that he has touched even people like me because of the seed that he planted in me to go to nursing school. Do you know how he got me to go to nursing school? You guys don't know the story. He made me a bet. We will put the application in for you, but I bet you can't get the 2.8 or higher. But if you do, I'll give you this card. All right. So because I'm competitive like that, I had no idea what I was getting into. I went to the school, and I got a 3.2. <laughs> give me my card. Once you start something, you don't quit, right? My, uh, my, my natural father. <laughs> so because of that, I, I just kept going um, and became a nurse. And when he took sick, he told me, he said, so this is why I want you to be a nurse, to take care of me one day. And I felt such honor to be a part of his journey of health and to be able to honor him and the choices that he made to care for himself. Part of our role as a nurse, as a professional, is to be a patient advocate wherever they are in their journey and partner with him. So I feel so blessed to be able to partner with him. But the amazing thing about Charles, what I love about him the most, is his love for my sister. So, OMG. You know what? <laughs> I kid you not, I came in November and we were posing for pictures, right? And here I thought he was in the picture for me until I look at the picture and he's looking down at his wife so lovingly. I'm like, that was about us. It was as, it was as if I was not even in the picture. Mad about that. Like what? And they had an awful last year. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just hated that he's gone. I know that he's in heaven, and I'm so 
so glad he's with Jesus, but my goodness, I'm going to miss him so much. And, um, I just love uh, the legacy of love and the example that he was to his sons. And you guys have a big shoes to fill, but you've got it. All of you have it inside of you. Um, the love that he has, the love that he had, you guys have that all inside of you. So, um, I love my sister. But some people and I'm going to go to the But some people are truly like family, and for me, the clients have always been that. They have been a constant in my life, and they have been a part of holidays, birthdays, special occasions, fellowship meetings, spiritual knowledge day, um, graduations, and so many other meaningful experiences in the community. I remember being a child just talking to my mom, and I had to have done like, I don't know, maybe 10 or something in my room. And she was sharing with me that if anything ever happened to her or my dad, she would want us to look the car. <laughs> and I don't know if she ever asked me that. <laughs> And even though she never asked, they truly have the little folk expectations. Sister, mom, brother, child have definitely been like family to me, especially my family for clubs. And I thank God for that. He always made sure that I had somewhere to go if I didn't like, if I after church, and if I was like kind of hesitant about it, but I felt bad for not like when, for not going. So I definitely appreciate their hospitality with that. Um, and I just also wanted to share, my dad is going to speak a little bit about Northwestern, but I feel like partly it's because of Brother Clark, and he's going to be my burden truth today. And so I also want to acknowledge that and just thank you so much for sharing with everyone um, how much you need for my family and how much we're going to And my siblings want to be here, but they want to go here. So we love you and we're great. <laughs> First of all, the family, the Clark family, really, 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 really blessed that Clark Charles came into my life at Northwestern. So Northwestern in 1973, 74, 75. Uh, there were a group of students there. Uh, uh, their names were uh, Sister Gladi, Sister, Sister Bertans, Sister Denise, Myself, I mean, my brother Charles, brother James, and myself. Um, they, and it was all this group, this, these six people at Northwestern, were a result of the faithfulness of brother Charles. When he came in the, I'm going to say September of 1975, at the graduate student at Keller Management School, he came and he, his, when he set foot in that campus, none of, none of us were in the you love the church of God. But when he came to the campus, his light shined so much that Brother James, James James, met him. And once James met him, after I called him the rest of the people, James was my best friend at Northwestern. And Sister Denise lived in the same complex, the same housing complex as Brother James. So his light drew Brother James Brother James brought me into the into the congregation and brought me into the truth because he had given me his best friend. And I just wanted to just let you know that because of this, because of the consistency of Brother Charles' life, because of this, because of the settleness of his spirit, and, and because of the power of God in him that was able to reach the six of us at Northwestern. Now, now there's, there were four of us, and now there's two of us that are left. And we just want to just, I just want to make sure that you might, that I express as honor to Brother Charles, I express how, why I'm here. In other words, my genesis. Why, why am I here? It's because of Brother Charles. Because of his witnessing on campus that brought us all together. And I really feel blessed from that. And as my daughter mentioned, Sister Denise uh, and myself, we came.
came to know that if anything ever happened to us, we, we knew that the Clarks would be the people of New York to raise our few children. Because, the, because the spirit, once you, once, it was understood, once the power of Brother Charles manifested itself, it was self, but it's a family, that's power. That is a powerful testament. Nothing goes, nothing has more, or one of the key things that has to do with weight is the power that, that a parent can have. Because we were really, really, really blessed and really impressed by So, and once again, to do a of you for, for listening to me. <laughs>
certainly want to thank everyone who came out this evening. I'm going to leave with a scripture. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that war entangled himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. Amen. We're celebrating a soldier that has gone over the Amen. Thank God for the life of Brother Charles Lane. All the good remarks, all the positive things that have been said for the God of the And we all know. And it's true. That's right. It's true. That's the way Brother Charles did. Amen. Amen. We want to thank God for that this evening. Amen. Amen. We're continuing to pray for the family. Amen. Tomorrow the funeral is at Possible Road Church of God. Uh, oh, correct. Family hour is at 10. And the funeral is at 11. Possible Road Church of God. Amen. So we'll stand at this time. Be dismissed. Brother Mark Burke, Pastor Mark Burke, he would dismiss us in prayer. Yeah. Father, we thank you for this gracious hour. Father's be commemorate. And remember the life of our dear brother Charles Clark. Father, Father he was a tremendous soldier, as the brother said. Yes. Father lived such an example of life. Yes. Yes. Father, we thank you tonight for our dear brother. We thank you for the Clark family. We thank you for Sister Mel. Yes. We thank you for all the children, Lord God. Yes. Father, they're so dear to us, Lord. Yes. Father, Lord God, he was such a pillar to this congregation. Yes. Father, for so many years, Lord God, he held his post. He stood steady in the midst of storms. And yes. Father, Lord God, he was a faithful soldier to the very end. Father, we thank you for that tonight. Father, Lord God, he has carried his cross all the way here. And he has laid down his cross for the crowd. Father, Lord God, we thank you for all those that have come from near and far. Father, those that have traveled even from other countries, Lord God. Thank you for the impact from the west coast to the east, the north and the south, yes. all around the globe. Father, Brother Charles has had an uh, impact on so many lives. Yes. Father, we thank you for our dear brother. We thank you for Sister Mayo. We're yes. praying that even throughout this yes. hour, Father, as time progresses, Lord yes. God, that yes. you would hold her in your arms of comfort. Yes. We pray that you would surround the children with your love. Father, we pray that your spirit, Father, would just overshadow us, Lord God. Father, Lord God, even as we leave from this place, May we not leave from your presence as we gather again tomorrow morning. Father, may your spirit abide with us, Lord. Father, Lord God, we just want to have a glorious celebration. Father, Lord God, we know our hearts are heavy. Father, we shed tears. But Father, we are rejoicing because another soldier has made it holy. Father, Lord God, we are endeavoring to make it to the same place. Father, so you help us, Lord. Father, we all that go the same way. Father, so we pray that we be ready. Father, even as our brother was ready. Father, we thank you. We glorify you. Have your divine way as we leave this place. Father, go with us. Stand by us. And we'll praise your holy name in Christ's name. And will we all say? Amen. Amen.